forging cyber, forging cyber security experts. Secure Ninja. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV, and I'm here at RSA 2014 on the show floor in the Mandiant booth, speaking with one of my favorite interviewees, Richard Baitlick. Um, now, Richard, last year you were the CSO of Mandiant, and now you are the Chief Security Strategist of FireEye. So tell me all about this Mandiant FireEye merger. Well, thanks for inviting me back, Alicia. And uh, what happened, uh, many of you may have heard of the news, in uh, December of last year, FireEye acquired Mandiant for about a billion dollars in, in stock and cash. And what's happened is, if you can see the, the screen behind us here, it says Mandiant to FireEye company. So all of the professional services that people know Mandiant for, the incident response services, vulnerability assessments, response readiness assessments, all that sort of uh, personnel type work, that's going to stay a Mandiant offering. Everything else we did, software and such, is not part of FireEye. So, I'm now at the, at the FireEye group, but if you have a breach and you need to call someone for help, go ahead and dial up Mandiant. We're going to still send people out to help you. Now, I'm familiar with what a chief security officer does, but what exactly is a chief security strategist? Well, a strategist is a person who tries to look a little bit beyond just the tools and tactics that we use to try to secure networks and tries to take it up a couple notches. So, for example, in my time in the military and in the Air Force, we would start out with a, a goal. Like, what is it we're actually trying to accomplish? Like, remove Iraqi forces from Kuwait or something like that. And then you have campaigns. These are the things that you're going to do over days, weeks, months, perhaps, to accomplish that goal. Underneath that, you have operations that you run and the tactics that you use and then the tools. So while I'm not trying to discourage anyone from buying tools, we're obviously at RSA where all these sorts of things are around us, really you should start and say, what's the goal we're trying to accomplish? What's the strategy we're going to use to implement that goal? And then let the tools and stuff meet those needs. So as a strategist, my, my goal is to try to help people understand that. I also provide outreach to the United States government. I testify. Uh, I work with think tanks. Uh, I have a second hat now. I wear, I'm a senior non-resident fellow at the Brookings Institution, so I try to help them with their cyber angle. So it's a nice bridging between my world of the technical that I used to do and now some of the policy, because obviously the policy people need our help, and frankly the technical people need the policy world to get their job done too. Right. Um, what are some of the recent security issues you've been working on lately? Well, I'm not working on it directly, but I am really worried about Bitcoin. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, I'm uh, TAO, Dow Security on Twitter, and every once in a while I talk about this. I'm worried because Bitcoin has become so valuable, it's becoming not only the currency that intruders use, but it's also a target of activity. Uh, just today we saw that Mt. Gox, which is one of the exchanges where you could uh, uh, trade in Bitcoin for US dollars and vice versa, is closed. And there's a, a document that's circulating that appears to be leaked from them that said they went down because uh, 744,000 Bitcoins were stolen from them. If you do the math with Bitcoin at you know, several hundred dollars, $500 or whatever, uh, a Bitcoin, that's a lot, you know, it's hundreds of millions of dollars. So I see that as Bitcoin, Bitcoin becomes more popular and more valuable, intruders are not just going to be attacking you and me who may have that currency, but they're going after the exchanges. And that's where the real money is. Because if you can steal all of the money at, the, at one shot, that, that's, that's serious dollars there. That is serious. Um, where do you see Bitcoin heading in the future? Well, the, the big battle with Bitcoin is, is it going to be the currency that stays, or is it the one that makes all the mistakes and something new arises from the ashes? There are many other virtual currencies that are out there. So some people think that Bitcoin is going to be the one that's it's like Napster. It showed the way, but then it didn't really succeed. Right. Maybe you'll have the same thing with Bitcoin. Others think that you can work out the problems and it's mainly an engineering issue. But I tend to think that until you have something that has the same trust as a bank, has the same responsibility as the Federal Reserve, all these sorts of things we've built over the last several hundred years, I don't know, I'm a little, I would short Bitcoin at this point. <laughs> You're not exactly ready to invest in a bunch of Bitcoins that's right, right now? That's right, that's right. Got it. So we've all noticed that RSA is bigger and better than ever before. What kind of themes are you seeing going on this year? Well, walking around the show floor, and there's more than one show floor, there's, there's south and north, which yes. is just amazing. I've noticed the word security intelligence in many places, and I've seen analytics in many places. Okay. So security intelligence is a buzzword because if you know about your adversary, you can better defend yourself. And analytics seems to be a buzzword because if you can get all this data in one place, maybe it will help you. Now, at FireEye, we've, we've jumped into that, into that space. We have a new threat analytics platform. The reason we developed it was our customers wanted a way to get threat intel from Mandiant and FireEye uh, applied to their logs. So that's something we've built now, and we just released it this month. Um, and I'm really excited about that. 
everyone else seems to be working at that space, but what I see is that they're, they're more or less just trying to get the data in one place, and then once you have it, what are you supposed to do with it? Here at, at uh, Mandiant and now FireEye, we're out there doing incident response with all these agencies and, and retailers and such that are hacked, so we know what to look for in this data. So, I think we're going to make some progress with that, with our, our not only our platform, but maybe you know partnering with some of the other organizations you see here at RSA. Right, and um, the I guess the former CEO of Mandiant, Kevin Mandia, is speaking here at RSA. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, just almost exactly a year ago, we released the APT One report. So Kevin will be talking about in his capacity as the chief of, uh, chief operating officer of FireEye, uh, one year after APT1, what have we learned, what's been happening? So that should be a good session. What are some of the things that have happened since then? Because that's what we talked about exactly one year ago. Yeah, so, well, I'd say the biggest thing that happened was uh, he, whose name we shall not speak, uh, Edward Snowden, there I said it, um, <laughs> <laughs> he, several months after the APT1 report came out, he dropped all of his documents, and that completely changed the national, uh, in the international discussion. It started out being one of, what are we going to do about the Chinese threat, and quickly turned into, what are we going to do about the NSA threat? And I mean, just a couple of steps to our left is the NSA booth. Mm -hmm. So it turned what, a, a group that was stealing in information for intellectual property theft, it, it took the spotlight off of them and turned it onto an agency who's trying to defend the country and who's conducting normal espionage. So that's what's happened. Um, the, the, the basically the pressure has been taken off the Chinese and it may never be reapplied. Um, hmm. Everyone's afraid of what the NSA can do. Maybe properly so, maybe not. I fall into the camp having having lived under that, that, that work and, and done some of that work. I know the safeguards that are in place, but it takes a lot of work to establish that trust, not only in the, this country, but in other countries. Right, lots of drama here in the cybersecurity community, Abs always. Yeah, honestly, I would never would expect a drama here, but uh, we're, we're having it this year. <laughs> Definitely. Well, thanks so much for speaking with us. We'd love to check in with you and see what's going on from time to time, so it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Alicia, nice to see you again. Definitely, you too, and good luck with FireEye. Thank you. We'll have to stop by the FireEye booth and see what's going on. All right, they're right across the way. Definitely. All right, well, everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV, and make sure you don't miss any of the interviews we're producing here at RSA. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and we even have an Instagram account, so make sure you follow us on that. I'm Alicia Webb. Thank you for watching. Secure Ninja TV is brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in cybersecurity training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. Secure Ninja, forging cybersecurity experts.